Let's start with the main event, shall we? Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns. No rock, but Sami Zayn. Oh, boy. A flashback to SmackDown when Kevin Owens refused to hit Sami with a chair. Sami refused to give Roman the chair when he requested it. That was the start of the end. Even though Roman Reigns retained the undisputed championships, he then wanted to beat down on Kevin Owens. In fact, he wanted Sami Zayn to partake. Sami would hit Roman Reigns in the back with the steel chair instead. This was his downfall, literally. The bloodline beat down ensued, but notably... Jey Uso walked away. Don't forget, this all started with main event Jey Uso. Jey Uso didn't ever want to be with Roman Reigns, and he sort of fell in line. Jey walked away from the bloodline. Obviously, the bloodline left Sammy and Kevin Owens lifeless in the ring. Honestly, great storytelling, a great moment. But now, what the hell does this mean for the future of the bloodline? I have no idea... It's so freaking good. I was expecting The Rock, but do you know what? What we got was just as freaking cool. This is Things You Might Have Missed for the Royal Rumble, baby. Like the video, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. The pitch black match was a visual for sure. I think it was okay. I do, I do think it was okay. Bray seemed very confident in what he was going to do. The black sort of makeup as he walked to the ring... Obviously, to reveal the face paint when the actual lights would go down. Really interestingly, he had six on the side of his head. The assumption being this was the start of the Wyatt Six. Because after the match, we got the reveal of what we think is a brand new mask for Bray Wyatt. We don't know who this is or what this is. Is this Uncle Harper? Is this the Fiend? Maybe. We did do another video on the Pitch Black match, so make sure you check out that on the channel for more in-depth on the actual match itself. But I found it interesting that Uncle Howdy jumped onto LA Knight, plunging himself into oblivion with fireworks and fire everywhere because one of Bray's lines in his theme song is, Die for me, brother. And we think it's Bo, right? So is this the final piece to the Wyatt Six to go alongside the Funhouse Puppets, who was in attendance during Bray Wyatt's entrance. Not only that, they made an appearance later on after Uncle Howdy jumped to his doom, literally watching what happened from above. Love that visual. Makes you do wonder if this is now the Wyatt Six. Four plus Uncle Howdy plus this Bray is six. Now, we thought it might carry over to the Alexa match. It didn't. Alexa Bliss did try to go for the Sister Abigail, Interesting. They made a huge point of that on commentary as well, worth noting. And of course, it was though Bianca Belair reversed it, KOD, to retain the title. But afterwards, it was the playground that we saw before pop up while Alexa was in the ring watching. And of course, it flashed back to Alexa Bliss's career with Bray. And she was left there while Howdy was saying, you think you're in charge? I uh, honestly, this is still to play out. But I did expect something more tonight, I won't lie. I think that was a little bit lacklustre after what we'd just seen. I think, obviously, Raw will be very interesting now. What happens? Does Alexa Bliss realise she's not in charge? Well, the surprises for Royal Rumble started straight away. I love how they did this. Pat McAfee is back on commentary. And legit, I don't believe for a second Michael Cole knew this was happening. I think they played a prank on Michael Cole. And literally, Pat McAfee... Joined the commentary team for the rest of the night. Love to hear Pat McAfee back. Definitely made the rumble so much better. But Pat was totally out of practice jumping on these swivel chairs, right? <laughs> oh, poor Pat. Luckily, luckily the person next to him did actually save him. So that would have been embarrassing. Return and fall off the chair. Number one for the men's rumble was Gunter. I thought that was really interesting. Especially when number two was Sheamus running back clash at the castle. I thought that was a really nice touch. They did do the tease. Gunther Brock. People want it for Mania. Could it happen? They did the face-to-face -face in the Rumble. We looked like we was going to get the New Day actually colliding. But instead, what we got was this. I don't know what this was. <laughs> it was funny, though. 
But we do have to mention Kofi Kingston's elimination. Of course, he was trying to land on the chair. It did botch, but my God, that doesn't matter. Kofi smacked his head into the announce table. He 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 really hurt himself. Hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood. I hope Kofi Kingston's fine. We saw Brock get eliminated by Bobby. Not a massive shock. A lot of people predicted this would happen. Brock, though, would go on a rampage. Absolutely love that. That was cool. Like a whole two or three minutes of Brock just destroying everything and referees. We'd have Dominic Mysterio come out wearing Ray's mask after Ray failed to enter the Rumble at number 17. Although Dom stole the mask, he seemingly couldn't rip it. And somehow that just makes Dominic's character work even more, right? <laughs> Booker T was in the Rumble. I love this. We got a Royal Rumble spinner which, by the way, Seamus absolutely loves. Awesome. I think this was cool. Edge came back at the Rumble again. Not a massive shot. We all knew this would happen, I think. He went after Judgment Day. They would cause his elimination, but it wouldn't end there. Beth Phoenix would confront Rhea Ripley during the Men's Royal Rumble. Of course, the beatdown of Edge was ensuing. And of course, Beth would come out and attack Rhea. Makes perfect sense. Love how they did that. Definitely looks like we're getting the mixed tag now. Logan Paul returned in the Men's Rumble match. Do you know what? I was okay with this because this spot alone was brutal. Him and Ricochet, one side of the ring to the other, absolutely brutal. Cody Rhodes would return at number 30. No surprise, we knew Cody was coming. But the final two, number one and number 30. By the way, Gunther broke Rey Mysterio's record. The man who has been in the Royal Rumble the longest. But unfortunately, it was shattered dreams for Gunther as Cody Rhodes would win the men's 2023 Royal Rumble. Cody Rhodes is going to WrestleMania. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments down below. But because Rey Mysterio didn't enter, technically there's one more spot left. Could we be seeing Cody Rhodes have to face someone to get through the final 30 still? I don't know, man. Maybe there's another twist to come. The Women's Royal Rumble was entertaining as hell, I swear to God. Rhea Ripley entered number one. Number two was Liv Morgan. We had a return of Natalia after a broken nose. Thought that was quite good. And then we had Roxanne Perez, the NXT Women's Champion, debuting in the Rumble. And of course, Zoe Stark. I thought that was interesting because she's the number one contender. And of course, then we had this. Uh, you knew something was going to happen. And it was Asuka as Kana. New theme song. Obviously, new look. This was her look in Japan. This killer clown-like gimmick. Absolutely love it. She looked brutal. She looked dominant. She looked good. And the commentary team put her over a lot. And that's exactly what she needed. So well done to Asuka for that. We also got Piper Niven, yes, no longer do drop. Triple H writing those wrongs one at a time. Love that, love the whole vibe that she gave off. And I love, again, commentary putting her over as well. We had Chelsea Green make her return to WWE at number 20. Highly anticipated, but she was eliminated after five seconds. I thought that was funny. Michelle McCall made her entrance from the front row. Thought that was really cool. Indy Hartwell from NXT was in this match too. That was really cool to see. Can we now reunite Index in the way, please, WWE? Because we're high maintenance, right? <laughs> oh, oh, Nia Jax! Oh, no. Number, they even botched the timer for Nia Jax's return at number 30. Rhea Ripley would hit her with Riptide, though. And then 11 women would eliminate Nia Jax from the Women's Royal Rumble. Do you know what? It was okay. I don't know if Nia Jax is back for good or if this was a one-off appearance. I suppose we'll find out on Monday Night Raw, but Nia Jax was in the Royal Rumble. We had Asuka, Liv and Rhea as the final three. Really good final three. Asuka was the first to fall which meant the final two were Rhea and Liv. It was Rhea, though, who won the Women's Royal Rumble. Predictable, yes, but the right decision 
Yes, we all wanted it. That's the point. We we knew it was going to be Rhea because she damn well deserved it. And congratulations to Rhea Ripley. Who does she face, though, at WrestleMania? Charlotte or Bianca? That's going to be fun. The Rumble was really fun, I'm not going to lie. Personally, I think it deserves an 8.5 out of 10. There was a few things I would have done different. More surprises in the men's, for example. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. Like the video. Share the video. Extra long one today. I'll see you next time. Peace!